Greetings from Terry here, D-Lab Electronics. Project of the day, a very clean Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. This transmitter comes to me from a fellow ham operator. He's a big AM buff, like me. He was working on the transmitter, installed new filter capacitors, and then he was going to set his modulation current by the slider resistor underneath. After attempting that, he lost modulation and he has no modulation current showing on the meter. So obviously, it's probably that resistor that's failed. They're old, they get hot, they corrode. And this is a common problem in these old transmitters, right? It's over 50 years old, what do you expect? So before I even turn this thing on, we're gonna give it a good inspection, take a look at that resistor, measure it, and if it's bad, we'll replace it, and then see if the modulation comes back to life. All right, we'll start off just giving it a little cosmetic sweep so you can see how nice this Viking 2 is. The Johnson Viking 2s were considered the 57 Chevy of Johnson transmitters. Very desirable, very reliable. Okay, let's take a look at the top. Here's the chassis. Nice and clean. All the tubes are installed. Look down here in front of this rectifier tube, you see the Johnson sticker. Back in the day that it was made, all the transformers look original. This is a really clean Viking 2. So let's take a look at the bottom. All right, bottom side. Equally as clean. There's the new capacitors that he told me installed. And there is the 20K slider resistor used for modulation current. So if you take a close look, You'll see where the wiper arm is. There's a big spot of corrosion here. All right? This is obviously the original. So let's get a meter on it and see if it's open. So I got my handy Beckman 310 connected right now on the 200K scale. We're going across the resistor. This is supposed to be a 20K 50 watt adjustable resistor. You can see we've got 19.3K. So that's good. But the tap is where it fails and we see all this corrosion so let's see what we got you can see we're kind of dancing around well over 50k now if I were to move this yeah so the resistor is open which we knew you can tell by looking at it it's bad so it's time to replace it so here's our replacement this is a Ohmite the part number is a D50K 20KE this is new in the box. You can still buy these for a little over 20 bucks a pop. Got your little slider. And they come with new little brackets. Because obviously if you look at this one, it was much larger. And more than likely those brackets won't fit into the new resistor. So first step, let's get this one out of the way and make room for the new one. So you can see there's been some previous work done. You see this little wire here kind of flying out there, right? What I'm going to do to make this easy is we're just going to clip these off, right? I'm going to clip these terminals right off the resistor rig and get it out. So you can see the original tabs, if you just kind of pull on the resistor, she'll pop out. Just takes a little bit of effort because they try to grip it. Anyway, that one's out, so the question is, is will the old brackets go into the new resistor? And not quite. So we're going to go ahead and change those out. All right, so I was not correct. Bending this tab does allow the new resistor to slide into place. So that's great. I don't have to get underneath the switch and try to remove that hardware to put in new brackets. All right, the new resistor is in place. The original brackets holding it. Now I need to clean up these wires and get them soldered on. One word of precaution Leave this paper in place while you're doing all that because you're in here with tools and you don't want to hit those little fine wires where you're going to be replacing your resistor again. So the new 20K resistor is installed in the Johnson Viking 2. As I said before, this is a 20K resistor. So we'll measure from here to here. You can see we got approximately 19.8 something K and if we go to the center tap 
you see about 11.7 if we go over here got a little over 8k all right this is just the preliminary setting I'm going to have to adjust that to set the modulator current assuming that it actually works so let's see if I got it fixed so I have a story about these resistors to share with you guys these are the 20k 50 watt resistors that I purchased for the Viking 2 and I always buy them in pairs so I have a backup because I'm always working on these transmitters right so here is the new resistor right out of the box and I thought well obviously before I put it in the transmitter I'm going to check it so here's my meter and I'm going to the outside terminals I'm on the 200k scale and you would expect to see 20k well look it's open so I thought well what the heck and I went from here to the point where the slider is and I see 9.8k I thought well somewhere it must be open so you slide down here there's about 12.8k 13k 13.9 14.6 15.3 right there she opens up so the resistor was damaged right out of the box I thought well good thing I bought two so I can at least get the second one in there and get this transmitter going well guess what it was also open no physical signs of damage at all to the resistor I have no idea why this was I thought well what the heck so I contacted Allied told him what was going on and they overnighted two new resistors to me no charge they did not want these back to verify what I was telling them was true uh, the new resistors check fine they're in the transmitter and I'm ready to test it now but I was very impressed with their customer service so if you guys are looking for vintage parts and you want some no-nonsense treatment if you have an issue buy them from Allied all right, here's the initial test. Got my grid set a little high there. Turn them back. Let's check our plate. Gotta love that squeaky roller inductor. Let's go to modulation. Oh, still in CW. What a dunce, huh? Here we go. Oh, there it is. A little over 50 milliamps. So here's the old microphonium. There we go. Got plenty of modulation. You can almost hear it coming out of the 807s. That's a good sign. Alright, now we're going to check the uh, quality of the audio coming off the of Viking 2. We got a Hammerland 180 receiver. Just have a little jumper wire hanging out of it for an antenna. The transmitter's into a dummy load. Let's see what the audio sounds like. Hello. Hello. One, two. Hello. One, two, three, four. Obviously, the uh, audio does not sound too good coming off the Viking 2. She's pretty broken up. So we obviously have some other issues with the modulation. The current's good, but I suspect maybe a bad preamp tube or there could be some open resistors in the audio section. So back to the Viking 2 we go. Well, obviously the first area you want to look at is the audio section and the preamp because that audio is extremely distorted. And these old resistors are famous for opening up or changing value, right? So let's take a look. There's a 470K here. There's a one meg here. So go to one meg. Let's see what we got going here. 1.13 meg. Okay. Then we have a 470K right here. Ooh, she's open. Let's go up to 20 meg. Yeah, so the 470K is wide open. That's typical for these old transmitters. It's the first thing you want to look at. This right here should be a 1.8K resistor. Let's 
go down to 2K scale. Oop, a little more than that, isn't it? 3.69K, so that guy's doubled in value. So I'm assuming the input preamp isn't doing much of anything. Then we go up here to the next stage, all right? This appears to be a 20K resistor. I have not looked at the schematic. It's higher than 20K. That's 31K. And I bet you it's not supposed to be. I'll take a look at the schematic here. That little guy, according to the schematic, huh, should actually be a 22K. So yeah, he's a little bit out of tolerance. And then we also have a 470 ohm resistor. Right there. He's a little high, but not as bad as the rest of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change all the resistors. Make sure these caps are soldered in securely since they've been added. And then we'll retest the audio. Alright, for the fun of it, <clears throat> before I go in here and change the resistors, I want to take a look at that audio on my scope. And what's really cool about the modulation section in the Viking 2, you do not have to be in transmit to see the preamp tube outputs. So right now, I'm on the output of the second preamp tube. I'm just going to key the mic, and you take a look at my audio. Okay, here we go. So that should be like a sine wave, right? It's not even close. You see it's all clipped. Even when I talk, you see how raspy it looks? So that is an indication, obviously, that the preamp section is not working properly whatsoever. So we're going to change those resistors. I'll check the tubes, make sure they're okay. And then we're going to do this test again, see what that audio looks like. All right, I've completed the brain surgery. I replaced all the resistors in the audio section. All the old carbons are out. I reused the caps that were in there since they had been replaced. I've got my scope set up. Remember we had the distorted audio. So I'm going to take the old D104 again. Let's take a look. Look at that. It's like a perfect sine wave. I bet you this thing will sound like a million bucks now. So let's fire up the Hammerland and get a live check on that audio. So here we go, live test using the Hammerland 180 receiver. Now expect some feedback because I have the bottom off of Viking 2. The receiver's right next to it, okay? But I'll do my best. Here we go. Hello. Hello, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. All right, I'm going to turn up the audio a bit. I'm going to back out of the scene. Hello, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, she's still working. So here's another test of the Johnson Viking 2's audio. This time, we'll use a realistic DX150B receiver, which actually has great AM quality. So here we go. One, two. Still got a little bit of that uh, feedback. But you can hear she's really talking. Nice, clean audio and no hum. All right, that wraps up troubleshooting the audio section of a Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. These two things that I showed you, the resistors in the audio section and the modulation current resistor, are the two main failures in the audio of the Johnson Viking 2. And if you're in there replacing that, make sure to replace all those filter caps, because if you don't, they're just going to fail and cause you more problems. We'll cover that in a future video. Hope you enjoyed.